This is the GIS News Hour for Tuesday, 6 March. I am Leslie Ann Johnson Cornwall. In the headlines, special sitting of both houses held to remember former Prime Minister George Brazan. Grenada and China to sign agreement for the reconstruction of the athletic stadium and a call for greater emphasis on sustainable tourism ventures. Details are next. <music> Budget Day is Friday, March 9th. The Government of Grenada invites you to its budget presentation under the theme, Consolidating the Recovery and Advancing the Transformation Agenda. It's all about you, the challenges and the future of our nation. So get the facts and know the plans for building a dynamic Grenada. Finance Minister the Honorable Nazim Burke makes the budget presentation Friday, March 9th, beginning at 10 o'clock in the morning at the Grenada Trade Center. You are invited to attend or tune in to live radio and TV broadcast of the 2012 National Budget. Budget Day is Friday, March 9th. Answer the call to raise awareness about kidney disease. Let's save a life today. Come walk with the Grenada National Patient Kidney Foundation. March 11, from Camahorn Park to the Tanti Netball Court. Starting time, 4 p.m. Departure at 3.15 from the Tanti Netball Court for persons with transportation wishing to walk. This event is sponsored by Tees Boutique, Grenada General Insurance, Deco Industries, Design Factory, Poly Natural Spring Water, and Wagi Tea Rental and Sound Company. Be there to support the Kidney Foundation Health Walk. March 11, this ad complements Brainstorm Productions. Welcome back, viewers. The substantial contributions made by former Prime Minister George Brazan to education, the economy, and Grenada's nutmeg industry were remembered during a special sitting of both houses on Tuesday. Mr. Brazan, who died on February 18, was also remembered by members of the upper and lower houses for nurturing the highest principles and practices while in the service of Parliament. Prime Minister the Honorable Tillman Thomas commended him for his vision to see Grenada as the premier venue for trading activities activities in the OECS and as the man behind the construction of the Grenada Trade Center. As a politician, he was also an outstanding person, especially he was very passionate about trade and agriculture and economics generally. And in the 1990s when Grenada was in a state of economic difficulties, it was George Brisson who spearheaded the structural adjustment program. Again, and mobilized regional leaders, the late Lee Mo from St. Kitts, the late John Compton from St. Lucia, the now governor of the Central Bank, and other leaders, they came right here to Grenada and assist in getting this uh, structural adjustment program together. A program that really brought back Grenada to creditworthiness and laid the foundation for positive economic growth in uh, Grenada. So we have to recognize him, Mr. Speaker, Madam President, for his uh, contribution. Opposition leader Dr. Keith Mitchell described Mr. Brazan as one with a deep sense of commitment to people and the future of the country, as evidenced by his commitment to teaching. He added that as politicians, they should use Mr. Brazan's passing as an opportunity to examine themselves as individual politicians and as a nation. Because too many times, Mr. Speaker, People have made sacrifices and have gone beyond the call of duty. But during their lifetime, we fail to recognize them and to give them their due. And it's not just in the area of politics. That's why I said I'm saying this in the context of our own individual selves collectively also and as a nation. We have seen in the area 
of sports. So many times we have persons who have given their entire life and made tremendous sacrifices. And when their glory days are over, we forget them. And as use the word we in a broad sense, Mr. Speaker. And as I said, it's not just one area, all areas of life of this country. We must be a responsibility for this and we must correct this. So if his passing has led us to think more and act more forcefully in, rec in recognizing contributions of the leadership of our country and of course in whether it's politics, church, sports, wherever, then maybe his passing would not have been in vain at this time. Also paying tribute was opposition Senator Anthony Boson, whose association with Mr. Brazan spans three decades when they both gave extra lessons at the GBSS to A-level economics students. He says Mr. Brazan's contribution as an economist and a minister of government earned his appreciation and admiration. Boson added that Mr. Brazan will always be remembered for his pioneering role in the development of Grenada's nutmeg industry. It was Mr. Brazan who worked with the Indonesian nutmeg producers to form that cartel arrangement which resulted in Grenada extracting unusually high price for nutmeg at that given time. Subsequent to that, as a result of pressures from the IMF, that cartel arrangement was broken up and the price of nutmeg plunged to unacceptable low levels. But it was then, and in recognition of the benefits that could be derived from the secondary and tertiary processing of the nutmeg, that George Bizan dedicated all of his effort to ensuring that we in Grenada add value to our nutmeg. And it was in that context that his book, The Nutmeg Industry, Grenada's Black Gold, was a masterpiece. Because as he clearly stated, the true potential to be derived from the nutmeg industry was not by exporting the nutmeg and cocos bag, but by extracting the byproducts here. Leader of government business in the House of Representatives, Nazim Burke, says as a student of George Brazan at the Grenada Boys Secondary School, the value of humility was implanted in him. The finance minister described Mr. Brazan as a man who sparked the, his intellect and implanted in him the virtues of the moral high ground. When the history of governments and leaders of this dear country of ours is written, I am confident that the name George Ignatius Brazan will enjoy an assured place in the esteemed company of the late Sir Eric Matthew Gary and the late Maurice Bishop. Although his tenure as Prime Minister was relatively short, George Brazan was the very engine, soul and heart of the NDC administration of Sir Nicholas Brathwaite. In honoring his memory today, we pay full and proper respect to his unique and outstanding contribution to the governance and development of Grenada, Kariakou, and Pitimatnik. Madam President, Mr. Speaker, St. George Northeast constituency is popularly known as NDC territory. That claim rests on the foundation of high quality representation, service, and commitment to the people of the area provided by the Honorable George Ignatius Brazan. The fact that he hailed from St. David was no hindrance to the enlightened and highly cultured people of St. George Northeast. They loved, admired, and respected him. And so for 14 years between 1985 and 1999, they elected him overwhelmingly to represent them in this parliament. 
As a representative of the people, George Brazan remains unequaled. I, as his successor, depending on God's grace, can only strive to emulate him. Culture Minister Senator Ali Gill taught Mr. Brazan's son, Halim Brazan, at the Presentation Brothers College. He says as a student of history, his first encounter with Mr. Brazan was through his work, Grenada Island of Conflict, work which he describes as a significant contribution to the development of the country. He says we must recognize the work of people like Mr. Brazan, whose contribution to education stands out. It is my respective and considered view that as an independent nation, Grenada must do more to honor its outstanding sons and daughters. I have a very respectful view, and Her Majesty's Leader of the Opposition touched on it when he spoke, and I, 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 I am tempted to believe he listened to me on these matters. That all former governor generals, all former prime ministers, and outstanding sportsmen and women and cultural performers and farmers and community activists and teachers, we must pay national recognition to them. I want to make a call, Madam President, loud and clear. And the Honorable and Distinguished Prime Minister and my other cabinet colleagues will appreciate my groundings in history. That we need to honor the Honorable George Ignatius Brizan, not by merely having a special seating of the Parliament, but I think we need to name something of significance after him. Two memorial tributes will be held in the United States for the late former Prime Minister. Messages of condolences and tributes have been expressed from various individuals and organizations in Grenada and around the world. The Consul General in New York opened the Book of Condolence last week and will hold a tribute in honor of the former Prime Minister in Brooklyn on Thursday. The Grenada Embassy in Washington, D.C. will also hold a celebration of and a tribute to the life and legacy of Mr. Brazan on Saturday. In other news, the Grenada government and representatives of a technical team from China will sign an agreement for the reconstruction of the athletic stadium on Wednesday. The reconstruction of the stadium, a 15 million US dollar project, will be funded by the government of China. The signing takes place at the Ministry of Works conference room. This was one of the projects on which an update was provided by Works Minister Senator Dennett Modest and Chief Technical Officer Cecil Harris just before the start of a special sitting of both houses on Tuesday. There's a Chinese delegation on the ground as we speak. They are doing, it's a technical team that's finalizing the concept designs and we are expecting <coughs> work to begin as soon as the design uh, and, and um, other aspects of the project have been approved. Works Minister Senator Dennett Modest. With regard to the 7.9 million US dollar Parliament House project, work is expected to start around the second quarter of next year. The Australian government will give 5 million Australian dollars and the United Arab Emirates has indicated to the Australians that they are willing to contribute a similar amount. The contribution by the Australian government for Parliament building is 5 million Australian dollars. The UAE have indicated to the Australians that they are going to match the funds. We are hoping that the excess um, could be used at the old parliament to restore it. So we are, uh, as to what use the, it will be put to, that's another issue to be de determined. But we are hoping that between the, uh, the UAE funds and the Australian funds, that would be more than sufficient to construct parliament, the new parliament, and any excess funds will spill over into the refurbishment of the, ex, the old uh, York House. The current status is that the advertisements should be going out uh, later this month.
to various um, countries around the Caribbean. The, it's going to be an architectural competition open to CARICOM architects. The ads are going to go out later this month. And we expect to have a short list of, the, of about six to seven architects by the end of April. Following that, uh, the architects will be given approximately uh, two months to come up with some concept designs. And so we don't anticipate actual boots on the ground uh, until maybe the second quarter of next year. Because the architects, once they are chosen, have to come up with the concept designs. We choose the winning design, followed by at least eight months of design work. Um, then followed by construction. So we're looking at the end of the first quarter of next year or early second quarter. And just a correction, the update was provided after Tuesday's special sitting. Students attending the first in a series of discussions on taking the tourism industry forward have been challenged to think green as well as to put more emphasis on sustainable tourism ventures. The challenge was put forward by international renowned tourism specialist Andy Dumain at a lecture hosted by the Presentation Brothers College on Monday. Betty and Lazarus has that story. Monday's lecture, organized by the Alumni Association of the Presentation Brothers College and the United States Embassy, provided students of secondary schools the opportunity to assess the current state of the tourism industry and to brainstorm on possible solutions to take the industry forward. Renowned international tourism expert Andy Dumain guided his audience through the many challenges currently confronting the industry and encouraged them to look beyond the issues in finding appropriate solutions. Global issues such as carbon emissions, the rising cost of fuel, energy taxes, and environmental pressures were all identified as factors affecting tourism growth worldwide. Domain believes that adopting green strategies can provide Grenada with the right opportunities to confront existing issues while increasing the benefits which can be derived from the industry. You have to look forward. Don't build tourism for the past, build it for the future. And the future, you already have the indicators. The future is your, your customers, as well as Grenada, is going to become more sustainable. Sustainability values will increase, and you have to be building the businesses, and you guys have to be trained to be thinking about not yesterday tourism, but tomorrow tourism. Gap Adventures, you go online, check these guys out. They have built their whole business model around sustainability. One of the biggest, at the height of the recession, the bottom dropped out of the tourism market. 50% losses, 60% losses. What's Gap? Gap is up 42% because they've connected to visitors on an emotional level, not just, hey, come to my beach and flop and drink too much. Do something, do something. Here's another one, Roar Africa. You know how much it costs to go on a Roar Africa safari? $30,000. $30,000. Look at that. Her business has doubled year after year, right straight through the recession. Because what she's doing is she provides these safari experiences that are connected directly to the locals. The value of tourism, you own it. You guys have it. I, no global company in the world can come in here and say, I know Grenada better than you do. Okay. You guys have what people want. The international tourism specialist also encouraged the students to start thinking ahead of the issues and products which Grenada offers. He identified aspects of community tourism and local family ties as strategies which can be used in the development of Grenada's tourism sector. Our mission is that we build this tourism experience so that it enhances the communities that live around us. And here's what they talk about. They support schools, they provide job training, they're doing all kinds of things. Okay. There's opportunity there. Doing very well. So a lot of people argue with me that, well, yes, being sustainable is the nice thing to do. I say, no, it's not the nice thing to do, it's the smart business thing to do. You know, I, yes, I care about the planet and all those things, but if you are the world's most ruthless capitalist, I would still recommend that you go the sustainable route because it's where the business is headed. And the longer you wait, the more you get packed into the, uh, the loser category because what, 
sustainability people believe is that you wait too long and you jump on this wagon after everybody else has jumped on, you will forever pay for that with lost reputation. Yeah, you're green now, but you weren't green when it counted. You have to be first, you have to be a leader. That's why sustainability is great for people and for businesses that aspire to greatness. And I believe Grenada can and does aspire to greatness. Here's the other story which I don't think maybe is reaching Grenada or reaching lots of other places. It doesn't get covered on the news in the US. There is this whole move towards simplicity. Have you, are you guys familiar with this at all? People, because of this sense of we're disconnected, the world's moving too fast, what's happening? People want to go back and touch their roots. I want to go back to the way things were a little bit. And those values are shifting and people are putting their money where their values are, about $400 billion a year now and growing. Okay. Mass tourism, look it up, it's kind of flat. It will grow just from sheer population, but sustainable tourism is growing at 20%. And it's because people are reassessing what's important to them. What's important to us is what you already have, value of family. How many of you guys have been to the US? Okay. Not too many, okay. Yes, Bernie's been to the US. Okay. Here's what you have that touches me when I'm moving around. It's this sense the family is still connected. I understand that it's, you know, it's had some pressure on it. In the US, families have become very disconnected. They're hungry for that emotional connection back again. It's something that you have, and we can learn from you. You bring visitors here, and they see how tight your families are. That would be a revelation to them. You guys sitting around talking to your grandparents, these multi-generational dinners, that's, that's shocking to a lot of people in the outside world because they thought it was gone. It's still here. That's what people want to see, and that's what you can teach us again. How do you make that connection? In November 2011, Grenada hosted a regional tourism conference during which the strategic plan for driving the industry forward was unfolded by Simon Steele, director of the Grenada Board of Tourism. That report from Betty and Lazarus. We take a break. We'll be right back. This is an urgent call to you to help our brothers and sisters who are in urgent need. The Grenada National Patient Kidney Foundation needs your help as they endeavor to raise funds to help kidney patients receive the dialysis they need. On Thursday, March 8th, they will be staging a telethon on the Government Information Service channel beginning at 8 p.m. Please try to find the time to tune into Channel 12, learn about this terrible disease, and hear from persons who are afflicted by it. Learn, too, how you can guard against it happening to you. And then, pick up the phone and make a donation to the Foundation. But most importantly, please, honor your pledge. Grenada's kidney patients need your help right now, and thank you in advance. Again, please join us Thursday, March 8th, on the Government Information Service, Channel 12, at 8 p.m. Live in Grenada presents its first annual Just for Laughs Grenada! Just for Laughs! Saturday, March 10th at the Spice Basket in the Institutional Local Showcase! And everybody club be there! Dillian Walters, Harry Malexis, Marcelio Nicholas, Robert White, Wynn Barber, Lister, Shaka, Devon, and much more! It's Heritage Theatre, Privilege Theatre, Family Theatre, and Outcast Theatre! And for the first time on stage, anywhere in Grenada, Mabel and Louise! Also, look for the Clack Scott Free Talk Combination, where the audience will decide on topics for six competitors to all talk about, and the king of all talk will be crowned. It's just for laughs, Grenada. Saturday, March 10th, 8 p.m. at the Spice Basket. I buy a jigsaw puzzle, the box read three to four years. I put it together in 51 days. <laughs> Admission $30 and tickets available at all line outlets. The Spice Basket, Kelly's, and Guo. Lady Cinti's 
Cortez, sponsors Line, Netherlands Insurance, Grenada Broadcasting Network, Quartz Grenada Limited, HattieGrenada.com, The National Lotteries Authority, and the Grenada Distillers Limited, makers of Crack Scott Rum. Continuing the news, Grenada's Flowers and Spices will adorn Westminster Abbey on Commonwealth Day, March 12. The day will be observed under the theme Connecting Cultures and will feature world music and dance, among others. Details from Janice Augustine. The UK's largest multi-faith celebration, the Commonwealth Day Observance, is attended by Her Majesty the Queen, the Prime Minister, High Commissioners, and up to 200 other VIPs and more than 1,000 school children. The Commonwealth Day Observance, under the theme Connecting Cultures, will be celebrated with a mix of world music, dance, and personal testimonies, and will explore the golden threads that tie people from every continent, faith, and ethnicity. Grenada's flora and fauna will be showcased by the designer of Grenada's nine gold medal winning exhibits at the Chelsea Flower Show, Susan Gaywood, with support from Mr. Dennis Noel of Noelville, Grenada, who will be working with the Westminster Floral Coordinator, Jane Rotten Lee, who says she is delighted to be given an opportunity to use the beautiful flowers and spices from Grenada. The flora of Grenada inspires Susan each year to create a stunning showcase, and the Commonwealth Day Observance provides a unique opportunity to recognize the contribution that flora and fauna play in making the Spice Isle Grenada an exotic and colorful destination. 2012 will be a special year for the observance as it will be kicking off the Commonwealth celebration of Her Majesty's Diamond Jubilee, marking both 60 years as the UK monarch and 60 years as head of the Commonwealth. Flower growers from Grenada can make floral contributions to the Westminster creation by contacting Mr. Dennis Noel of Noelville. Janice Augustine, Public, Public Relations, Relations Office, Office Ministry, Ministry of Foreign, Foreign Affairs. Affairs. The Democratic Labour Party may have used its integrity and accountability as part of its election's pathway to success in the 2008 general elections in Barbados, but according to former Prime Minister Owen Arthur, it doesn't practice what it preaches. Arthur recently made the claim when the Barbados Labour Party held a political meeting under the theme CLECO, a call for justice. He said the DLP does not really believe in accountability. Jamaica is once again being considered for major investment across a number of its sectors. This time it is from investors impressed with the country's suite of projects after attending the Jamaica Investment Forum on the 1st and 2nd of March at the Montego Bay Convention Center. The forum saw several investors from Russia being present in Jamaica and expressed an interest in erecting a plant to convert sweet sorghum. Consultant Mr. Peter Mitchell added that there was an international effort to improve farming and to find additional applications, including its use as poultry feed, secondarily as cattle, and in brewing applications. The country is also being considered as a nearshore destination for call centers and businesses for United States clients. That's news. Sport is up next. I am Junior Murray. Let's keep our athletes and sports clean. No dope in sports. 
Regional cricket returns to Grenada in March. It's the Windward Islands versus Barbados in the Regional 4-Day Championship at the Grenada National Stadium. Come see our Grenadian players, Devon Smith, Neilon Pasco, Andre Fletcher, the West Indies captain Darren Sammy, Shane Schillingford, among others, battle the likes of Barbados' Kurt Edwards, fast bowler Kimar Roach, and spinner Solomon Ben. Admission, $5 each day of cricket. All Grenada, come out in your numbers and see our West Indian cricketers fire themselves up in preparation for the Aussies. So make it a date, March 16th to 19th, Windward Islands versus Barbados at the Grenada National Stadium. Tino Best and Jonathan Charles named in the 13-man squad to represent the West Indies in the first of the three ODIs against Australia in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Former Antigua Barbuda Prime Minister Lester Byrd calls on the WICB to end the shutout of Chris Gale and labels coach Otis Gibson a failure. Sri Lanka leveled the Tri-Series final against Australia with an emphatic win in Game 2 other three match contests. Uh, Crystal Mopson and Sinclair Noel among the athletes uh, to watch in the National Primary Schools Athletic Championships later in the month. Uh, these and more are all in this edition of the GIS Sports. Hello, I'm Trevor Thwaites. We start with cricket and the news raging around the region at this time. Uh, former Antigua Barbuda Prime Minister Lester Byrd calls for the WICB to end the shutout of Chris Gale. Uh, on the regional team. Mr. Bird has also given coach Otis Gibson a failure on his management of the team's senior players. In a heated release, Bird says that Gale is too important to the success of the regional team to have been isolated for so long, adding that the WICB should take the lead in finding a solution to the long-running impasse. Gale, one of the most destructive batsmen in international cricket, has not played for the West Indies in almost a year since he was highly critical of the board and Gibson in a charge interview last year with a Jamaica radio station. Bird said that as far as he's concerned, Gale is more valuable to regional cricket than the WICB president, Julian Hunt, CEO, Ernest Hilaire, coach Otis Gibson, and skipper Darren Sammy all put together. He indicates that a team that deserves marketable value and draws large crowds does that for two reasons. Either it is a formidable unit and has a winning record or has batting and bowling stars. The former Prime Minister says that at the moment we have nothing and calls for a new structure to urgently propel regional cricket. Mr. Bird blames Coach Gibson for the impasse, arguing that uh, it was his public criticisms of the senior players following the team's failure at the World Cup that triggered off the controversy. While not singling out any player, Gibson told reporters that the West Indies' exit from the World Cup was because the senior players did not stand up. Mr. Bird says that Gibson as a coach should have been able to renew and re-energize senior players as Chris Gale, Chibnaran Chandapal, Ramnari Sawan and Dwayne Bravo to deepen their commitment to West Indies cricket. Instead, the former Prime Minister indicates that Gibson alienated these players and others who have failed to come forward. Mr. Bird is convinced that Gibson is not a good coach, having failed the test to prove his ability and manage senior players who have their own strong personalities. He says that Gibson tries to convince the region that the game is in good hands with a bunch of inexperienced young players, but insists that the problem is Gibson's own personality. The former Antigua Prime Minister says that, frankly speaking, Gibson is incompetent, unprofessional, and has failed miserably. The sentiments there were of the former Antigua Barbuda Prime Minister, the Honorable Lester Byrd. Well, despite the plea, there is no room for Chris Gale in the 13-man squad announced for the three, the first three one internationals against Australia on March 16th, 18th, and 20th at the Annasville Plain Field in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, there was a recall for fast bowler Tino Best and a debut for Winter Island's opening batsman Johnson Charles. Best gets a recall after some time in the wilderness, while Charles, who played in the, in the one-off 
2020 against England last year, makes his one-day international debut. Danish Ram Dean is also recalled as vice captain. The full squad is uh, Darren Sammy, the captain, Ram Dean, vice captain, Best, Charles, Darren Bravo, Dwayne Bravo, Sunil Narayan, Kieran Pollard, Kyron Powell, Kima Roach, Andrew Russell, Devinja Bishu, and Marlon Samuel. On the field of play, what do you know? Sri Lanka produced an emphatic batting display to beat the feet Australia by eight wickets in the second game of the Tri-Nation Series final Monday evening in Adelaide. The win has leveled the series one game apiece with all to play for in the final encounter Thursday evening local time. Centuries by skipper Michael Clark 117 and David Warner an exact 100 helped Australia to a respectable 271 for six in the 50 over encounter. Lasit Malinger, as he's done on numerous occasions, was the best bowler for Sri Lanka with figures of three for 40 from 10 overs. Sri Lanka responded admirably, reaching 274 for two in 44.2 overs with an impressive batting display. Skipper Tilekaratni Dilshan led from the front with a classy 106, and there were solid centuries or half centuries by Mahila Jayawadeen, 80, and Kuma Sangakara, 51. Scores again Australia 271 for 6, Sri Lanka 274 for 2. The final and decisive game is uh, Thursday evening in Adelaide. Uh, here at home, the West Indies cricket board, WICB, showers praises on the regional women's team who beat India in the just-ended one-day and uh, 2020 series in the region. West Indies completed a, a three-wicket victory in the third and final game on Sunday at Wanna Park in St. Kitts uh, to win the series 2-1. That's the 50-over series. They also won the preceding 2020 contest 3-2. President Julian Hunt says the team continues to make the region proud and at the rate at which they have been improving, improving, noting that the WICB's efforts to develop women's cricket is bearing fruits. Hunt said that the victory is a welcome morale boost for the team ahead of the upcoming ICC Women's World 2020 tournament in Sri Lanka in September and the ICC Women's World Cup next year in India. He singled out 20-year-old uh, Rangda Stephanie Taylor, who was named the player of the series for special mention. The West Indies boss is expecting that with a meaningful preparation, the team will be one of the main contenders in the upcoming competitions. Prior to the series, the West Indies were ranked fifth in ODIs, two places behind India, and were tied with the Indians in the 2020 rankings. In athletics, uh, Christel Mopson of the Grand Dance Roman Catholic School and Sinclair Noel of uh, St. George, South St. George Government are two of the athletes expected to feature prominently in the upcoming National Primary Schools Track and Field Championships towards the end of the month. The two won the under-15 categories at the recent St. George's Primary School athletic meeting at the National Stadium. Mopson was, the Mopson was the girls' winner and Newell's the boys' champion. Official John, John L. Mitchell says that Mopson was terrific. She won the 15, she won the 8, she was second in the, in the 1, she won the 200 meters, she won the 400 meters. Right, right, right. So she's an, a rather outstanding athlete that we have and, and we know that she's going to go on to represent the, the, the parish well. John L. Mitchell, much is also expected from Sinclair Noel, who was the star of the boys on the 15 category. He impressed with several outstanding performances. Sinclair is a first year on the 15, and I've never seen a first year on the 15 that strong for quite a long time. Um, he's absolutely fantastic with good, um, with good counsel proper structure behind him, with a good um, family supporting him, Sinke could be one of those athletes that you can look forward to, to doing excellently somewhere soon. That the principal of the South St. George Government School, uh, very, <laughs> that's uh, David Adams. Uh, John Mitchell, too, is also impressed with the talent of young Noel. I met Sinki for the first time 
at all field events and he was doing the long jump and I, I went around the long jump pit and I was looking at him he won that event huh? by the way and from speaking to him added to what Mr. Adams is saying here you can see discipline and humility coming out from that young man <laughs> and if he continues on that path we can guarantee you that we have a great athlete in the making we have a great athlete in the making with the attitude that he has towards the events we know that we have a great athlete in the making and by the way he was the all male champ right you are right. the under 15 category and he was also the overall male champion won all of his events the one the two the four the long jump that's a that's athletic official john l mitchell that's sports i'm trevor thwaites Don't do that! Oh God, sorry, I'll go back. After 48 sold out shows in Trinidad and Tobago and live and direct from the recently held Alternative Laugh Festival, the Caribbean King of Comedy comes to the Spice Basket in Grenada for the Laugh Out Loud Comedy Festival. It's the Caribbean King of Comedy, Larry Joseph, along with his sidekick, Mendoza, the Saint and Dolores. It's on Saturday, March 17th from 8 p.m. The Spice Basket will never be the same. This one is hosted by the hilarious Robert White. It's a belly full of laughter. So come laugh out loud at the Spice Basket. Tickets are $35. Available from all Gittins outlets. And at the Spice Basket in Polio, St. George's. Sponsored by You Malicious Cafe. Netherlands Insurance. Grenada Distillers. Gittins Agency and Duty Free. George of Huggins. GBN. Floor. Independence Agency. Planet Spring Water. Stones Custom Graphics. And Zebra. It's a night of laughter. So come laugh out loud. <laughs> Home is supposed to be my comfort zone, yet I'm in fear and feel so alone. My mother receives money, yes, money from men who sexually abuse me. I tried to tell my mom, but she won't listen to me. She said, he's my big brother, my uncle, your father, my man. Don't call anyone's name. I never wanted this. I need to tell someone. Please, help me. A message from the Ministry of Social Development and its social partners. Recapping the main point, a special sitting of both houses held to remember former Prime Minister George Brazan. Grenada and China to sign agreement on Tuesday for reconstruction of the athletic stadium and a call for greater emphasis on sustainable tourism ventures. That is the GIS News Hour. I'm Leslie and Johnson Cornwall. On behalf of all those who made it possible, we thank you for viewing. Watching the Government Information Service, channels 12 and 22.